Finding a place to live in Amsterdam is hell. Amsterdam is one of the most difficult places to find a place to live. And this is how I did it. Hey, this is David and welcome back to my channel. I've been living in Amsterdam for almost three years now in three different places. And each time looking for a new place, it was stressful. It took a lot of time. The first place I found via Facebook was on the single canal in a Dutch canal house. I loved it. A great roommate lived there for two years. The second place I also found via Facebook, it was a shared apartment on the east side in Oost. A bigger building, more modern building as well. The third place where I am living now, it's a one bedroom in Oudzoud, Oud South, near Vondel Park. I really enjoyed so far, a great location. So in this video, I just want to share with you some of my experiences, show you what a viewing looks like and give you some tips and tricks to hopefully make your experience a little bit better than mine. Amsterdam is one of the most popular places to live in the world. Time Out magazine named it a top city to live in the world. You have international headquarters here, professionals coming here to work, you have students coming here to study. And so demand is high, but supply is low. Also, social housing, 30 to 40% of housing in Amsterdam is dedicated to social housing. So then it becomes extremely challenging to find a place, very competitive. I've heard horror stories of people, students, that had to move back home because they couldn't find a place to stay. It's sad, but you're gonna have to pay a price. You're gonna have to know what you want because you can't be picky. And when I say price, it's expensive to live in Amsterdam. And you're gonna also have to pay a price in time, in stress, sometimes tears, a lot of resilience and a lot of patience. So let's look for a place to live in Amsterdam. Hopefully that first step is that you have a good understanding of what you want and your priorities as well. What's your budget? Do you want roommates? Which location? Do you want a park nearby? Once you have your priorities, then it's time to look for a house and apartment on websites like Funda, Perarius, Facebook groups. Once you do find a place, then it's time to hopefully schedule a viewing. And if you get that viewing, then it's time to go to that viewing. And in that viewing, you probably have to decide in the same day, in the next few hours, if you wanna submit a bid and when you do submit a bid, most likely you have to submit your documents showing how much money you make, your employer's contract, your passport, all that stuff. And if you're lucky enough for your bid to be accepted, then it's time to sign the contract to put in the deposit, usually two times the amount of rent, then it's time to move in. Well, that sounds simple, but the reality is that it's not so simple. There's a lot of stress involved. But let me show you what I went through over the past few months when I tried to find a one bedroom in Amsterdam. So I'm going to my first viewing of the season. It's at 4.30, should take around 10 to 20 minutes plus some questions. Let's see how it goes. So just finished the viewing, that was quick 10-15 minutes and there was actually some miscommunication between the current tenant and the landlord. She wasn't expecting so many people to come, she was still working. But yeah, the pictures always looked better than the actual place. It was quite dark, uh, quite messy and yeah, this one's a no-go. Okay, walking towards viewing number two, this one is close to Vondo Park. Let's see how this one goes. Okay, so that one was around 1450 euros excluding utilities and yeah, I don't know, it didn't really feel it as well. The, the backyard wasn't that enticing, the, the, the balcony. Um, but I also noticed for when bedrooms, I'm competing against uh, couples and usually I'm the only single person going in. So I'll see how that turns out. Yeah. 
So just got back from the viewing and very centrally located place on the Kinkerstraat. Very nice, small, cozy. Um, I think I'll probably put a bid and see what happens. Next step is to submit a few documents like pay slips, uh, my contract, my bank statements, etc. Uh, but there are so many people. It was one person after another, and so uh, very stiff competition. So let's see what happens. Another day, another viewing. Wow, I feel like looking for a place in Amsterdam is more difficult than getting into Harvard. There were so many people cramped into that staircase. And yeah, we got maybe a few minutes of viewing time and then we have to make a decision. But overall, I like the location. I like that there's a balcony. Um, we'll see. So what helped me eventually find a place in Amsterdam? Well, one big thing is to know what you want to know what your priorities are, what are your non-negotiables, because you're not gonna have every single thing, but hopefully your top two, your top three. Now, for me, I realized that some of my non-negotiables were that I wanted to find a place that was furnished. The other thing was having enough light in the apartment, because when I lived in the canals, while it was a great experience, in the winter times, it was very dark. And for what I do at work, I do a lot of trainings, a lot of meetings, where it helps to have a lot more natural light. And I do have a lot more light now in this apartment. The other thing was I wanted to be close to a park because I enjoy running in parks, walking in parks. There's also studies that show that when you live closer to a park, you're happier as a person. And now I live five minutes by foot from Vondo Park. Other questions you might ask are, do I want roommates? What do I look for in a good roommate as well? If you live with people, probably the single most important factor is who you will be living with. Do your personalities connect or do they coincide? So that becomes a very important factor. How far is your place from work, from school? Are there supermarkets nearby? How's neighborhood like? There's a website called Hood Maps, and I'll link it in the description below, where you get to see a map of Amsterdam and each location has a description of what each neighborhood is known for. And you might get a laugh from this as well. It's quite funny, but from my experience, it's quite accurate. So now that you have a list of priorities, your non-negotiables, where do you actually look for housing? Well, if you are looking for a roommate, then you have Facebook groups, you have commernet.nl. Facebook is a great option. You have many Facebook groups, but the thing about Facebook is you have to filter through the noise. Now, if you're by yourself, a partner, a family, and you wanna find your own place, you have Funda, Perarius, and you have these housing corporations like Vesteta. Let's take a look at an, an example. So Perarius and Funda are the two most popular websites to look for housing in the Netherlands, whether you want to buy or rent. I personally like Perarius because I like the design of the website. The user experience is a lot more friendly. So let's take a look at an example of how I would go about looking for an apartment in Amsterdam. So I'm going to search for Amsterdam and let's see what pops up. So this is sorted by newest first. This is really important because you really want to be first in line to contact the agency because in a few hours that listing might not be live any longer. That's happened to me many times, especially for the most popular listings. And you want to check first thing in the morning on the weekdays, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, whenever you can check it. That's when the, the bunch of the newest listings will come online and you wanna be the first in line to contact them. So in this case, what I usually do is I will set some additional filters. Of course, there's property type price. Yes, that's gonna be very important. 
zero euros I wish to 1750 because that is actually the price of Amsterdam nowadays for a one bedroom I want to look for an apartment now the city area I'll leave that blank because I'll use the map view later on district bedrooms one plus for myself now this is the interior so shell what that means is you basically get the concrete floor that's all you get the shell nothing else you don't even have a floor you have to buy the floor yourself uh, that's an option as well upholstered means there is a floor there's a floor and you might actually have to pay for that floor from the previous tenant there might not be a fridge you might have to paint the walls but upholstered means there is a floor for you Furnished means there's a floor and there's also furniture. And for myself, this was my personal preference. I only looked for furnished places because, well, it takes a lot of time to furnish a place. And this is a personal preference for me. And so you might check one of these. Let's leave this blank for now. Let's see what comes up. So we have 84 apartments for rent. And what I like to do is to go in the map view because... The big determinant for me is also the location. I wanted to live closer to Vondo Park on the west side because I found that most of my friends were on the west side. The activities, my basketball group, everything was more on the west side, but it's a personal preference. Let's take a look at what's available. If we zoom in, let's look at this one. Oh, so this is a great example of a shell. You get nothing except well the place itself so you see that you have to install floors yourself and there's not a whole lot here you probably have to do some painting as well um not a whole lot you have to do a lot of fixing no fridge nothing and still 1335 euros per month yeah this is amsterdam in 2022 this is also a temporary rental, minimum of 12, maximum of 12 months. That's the other thing in the Netherlands, the contracts. Most contracts all have a maximum length of say 12 months or 24 months. And this is because tenants get a lot of rights in this country. If you go past, I believe two years, then tenants get tenants rights and it's really hard to kick them out. So a lot of landlords will put in a maximum of 12 months, 24 months, and then you have to leave. That's what happened to me. Let's take a look at another example. Let's look at somewhere else. I don't know, what is this? 1550, 1550 near Albert Cup, the pipe. Let's look at this one. So this one is upholstered, meaning there's a floor. This one seems pretty nice. Uh, you have everything there, but it's not furnished. And the location is great as well. There's a lot of lighting. Mm quite modern as well so this one is available on september 1st today is august 7th so a lot of times this also matters a lot of the times the listings will be available immediately or in about a few weeks and this also becomes a challenge if you're currently living and you have a current housing contract because you have to give one month's notice so for many of these listings you might have to pay an, addi an additional month's rent because of the fact that you need to move in within a few weeks immediately um, so keep that into consideration the energy rating is also important especially uh, this year when energy prices have increased by a lot and this matters especially in the winter time when you need to use the heater and so don't just look at the the price here because 1550 in the winter time with today's housing and energy prices it's going to be quite expensive if you have an energy rating of like d e or f so this one is 1550 and usually it's going to cost a lot more you have to pay two three hundred euros of utilities and you have to pay the annual garbage tax as well so if you decide that this is something that you want what you want to do it's to plan a viewing right away and what you do here it's to contact and to call the real estate agent never email unless they ask you to because well if you write this message 
there's going to be a lot of messages, probably over 100 to the real estate agent, and they're not going to have the time to respond. So you really want to call and you want to call as soon as the listing goes live, especially if this is something that you want. So what I might do if this is something that I want early in the morning, Monday morning, tomorrow, I'll give that real estate agent a call. And so I want to plan a viewing. Sometimes you might not have the number, so you have to go to the website to find the number. Let's look at one more example. This one is furnished, really good location as well on Overtome next to Vondo Park. $17.50 per month for a one bedroom, one bedroom furnished apartment. Add on 70 euros per month for cleaning. This also excludes utilities as well. So at the end of the day, you're gonna be paying at least 2,000 euros per month for a one bedroom furnished apartment in Amsterdam. This is Amsterdam 2022. Wow, super expensive. Energy rating of C, city center. This is also when the year was constructed. This is an old build. And yeah, so this one is under offer, so most likely I won't get it. And there's been probably multiple and multiple offers already. But if this was new, what I would do first thing in the morning, plan a viewing, call them, schedule a viewing. So Facebook is another great way to find housing. But the thing about Facebook is that anyone and everyone can join from students to working professionals to scammers. Beware of scammers. They're everywhere on Facebook. But personally, I was able to find two places to live via Facebook. So it is possible. You just need to filter through the noise. So if you go on Facebook, you can search for Amsterdam apartment and you can find a million groups to join. This one has 82,000 people and you'll see people posting, for example, this person has a profile picture of a half naked girl with no face showing. And so for me, this is a red flag that this could be a scammer. I am not going to respond to this person. You also find people looking to group up and to partner up with other people to look for housing. And that's a better way instead of looking by yourself. You'll have people like Yvette advertising their place looking for roommates or she has two free rooms, 600 euros and 750, really cheap Amsterdam standards. Uh, she has criteria as well, a little bit about the house you'll see that there are real pictures and that a bunch of people have already responded. So what I might do next to figure out if Yvette is a real person or not is to click on her profile. And this shows me that, well, she is listing other listings on this group. So this tells me that either Yvette is a scammer or she has her own business helping other people rent out their place and she gets a percentage of that fee. The other thing is that Yvette doesn't have a profile picture of her face and it's a boat. So this is sometimes, oftentimes a red flag as well. But you'll see that 37 people liked it. Uh, she also responded to some of these comments. And if you go into her main profile, I won't do that, but I already did. You can see that Yvette is actually a real person. So if I'm interested, then I would send her a message. Hey, I'm interested. My name is David. This is how old I am. I'm a student. I'm a working professional. I have a contract, etc. My interests, who I am. And if she accepts you, she'll ask you to come to a viewing. And then from there, it's an interview process. One tip is never wire or send anyone any money before signing the contract or seeing the place. Oftentimes you'll see people complaining that they lost money, they sent money to a scammer. So never send money to anyone before signing anything at all. The second thing is if you want to increase your chances of finding a place is to join these niche Facebook groups or WhatsApp groups. For example, I'm part of the Americans in the Netherlands Facebook group. And sometimes, oftentimes, when people leave, they'll list out their apartment. Hey, I'm leaving. My apartment is free. Would anyone be interested? So then 
you get access to an apartment listing before it goes live on Funda or Perarius. I'm also part of a WhatsApp group for basketball, and sometimes people will also post listings there as well. Anyways, Facebook can be a great way. You just have to take some time to do some filtering. Another great way to find housing is by joining one of these housing corporations like Vestetta or MVGM. These are these big housing corporations that buy up buildings, they renovate them, and they rent them out. And their portfolio is usually pretty, pretty big and broad. And what you can do is go on the website like Vestetta.com and search for, say, Amsterdam. Right now, there are 168 results and look through some of these viewings. For example, I did find one that I was interested in, in the Amstel Tower. This one has a really nice view. It's 1,400 euros. It is not furnished, but there are floors. So if I am interested, then I will send in my application by registering. And so if I register now and I want this one, I will request a viewing. And here is where I enter information about myself. This is pretty standard. This is house and salary information. This contains confidential information, like how much money I make, how much savings I have, so I won't click here. But they'll also ask you for documents to prove that you are the person that you are and how much money you might make. And so passport, recent employer statement, your three most recent pay slips. This was back in early 2022 for me. Your bank account, how much money you have in your savings account, and any additional information that might boost up your application. So once you have all this information in the system, you go to step number four, you declare, you submit your application. And if they like you, if there's a room for you and you make enough money you fulfill the requirements then they'll schedule a viewing with you and from there it's an interview process you might get the place you might not i know several people that have gotten houses apartments through these housing corporations and they've had only good things to say about these companies be prepared be very prepared because time is of the essence what I found handy was to have a draft message, whether this was email, Facebook message, ready to go, ready to send. This included who I am, my age, where I worked, how much money I made, my interests, what people have said about me as a roommate, as a person. I had this ready to go to send to people on Facebook or to real estate agencies. The other thing is to have all your documents prepared and ready to go. Documents include your three most recent pay slips, a copy of your passport, ID, a copy of your employer's contract, reference letters from your landlords, how much money you have in your bank account. It's good to have all these documents prepared ahead of time because when it comes time to submit that offer, you also need to submit these documents as well. And you don't want to go fetch these documents because more than likely you have to submit your offer the same day as you're viewing. And when you do get the viewing, it's always random. It's a random day in the middle of the day. So you need to be extremely flexible as well. And once you go to that viewing, you might be lining up with 20, 30 people and you might have two minutes, five minutes to see the apartment and you need to make a bid on the same day. So you need to have all your documents prepared. You need to know if this is a place that you want and you probably have to make a decision if it's a yes or no the same day or the day afterwards. So it's important for you to understand what your priorities are, your non-negotiables. For myself, when I submitted a bid and I got the yes, actually the landlord called me back the day after to interview. He said that you're the lucky two that made it off the list. And so he had to interview me and this other person to figure out who would get the spot. Now, not all landlords will go through that, but just in case you do, be prepared to go through an interview as well. And if you do get the offer and you sign it and now it's time to sign the contract, what's important is for you to carefully read through the contract. What does it state? What type of contract is it? For example, in the Netherlands, there are four types of contracts. And you might not ever see one of these types, but these are the four types. 
Model A is for an indefinite period of time. You can stay there forever until you leave. I've seen these, but these are, from my experience, more rare because tenants get a lot of rights in this country. And that's where Model B comes into play. Model B is the one that I've seen the most. And this is for a set period, a minimum of say 12 months and a maximum of 24 months, two years. Because after these two years, it's by law that you have to give these tenants rights and tenants get a lot of rights in this country. It's really hard to kick someone out if they have tenant rights. For example, in my case, I lived in a single canal in a Dutch canal home and I wanted to extend my contract after two years. I was a good tenant, I paid on time. And the landlord also apologized to me because he did not want to extend my contract. He was afraid of giving tenants rights because he had a bad experience in the past. So I had to look for a new apartment. Model C is a contract that, in my opinion, my experience, it's less common. This is where it's temporary and the landlord plans to move back. Model D, it's also quite uncommon from my experience. It's a temporary contract, but all in all, it's important for you to read through the contract to figure out what you're getting yourself into. And lastly, I hope you have found a place or you will find a place, but here are some last minute tricks, tips, advice that I can think of. The first one is that if you're looking online on Facebook, be cautious of scammers and never wire or send your money to anyone online if you've never met the person, if you haven't seen the place, if you haven't signed the contract beware of scammers. If you're using Funda or Perarius, check every weekday early in the morning around 9, 10. This is also when Asians start their day. You wanna be the one to call them first thing in the morning, schedule a viewing. Preparation, preparation, preparation. It's important to prepare a draft message of who you are, your situation, your contract, how much money you make, pets, no pets, so that you have this ready to go to send to people on Facebook or to real estate agents. Also be prepared with the list of documents that you need to send if you get the offer. It's important to have this prepared so when it comes time, you don't waste any time at all. Read the contract, make sure what you're getting into. Figure out what type of contract is it. Is it a set amount? Is it a set period? Is it indefinite? Figure that out. Also understand what's included in the contract. Make sure that you can register. Also, sometimes you'll see in the contract that the landlord wants to increase rent by a set percentage. But actually, did you know that there is a maximum limit to which the landlord can increase the rent? And this is set by law. So look into that as well. Take pictures, videos of the apartment at the very beginning because you just never know. And lastly, go with your gut. Go with what feels right. If you go into a viewing and you meet someone, your potential roommate, or you go into a viewing and the place just doesn't feel right, then go with your gut. I know it's hard to find a place and you really can't compromise, but at the end of the day, your gut is always right from my experience. Whew. Anyways, that was it. I hope that was helpful. I was a bit stressed thinking back to the house hunting experience. It does take a lot of time, but I hope these tips, tricks was somewhat helpful in helping you find a new place to live in Amsterdam because I truly think this is one of the most fascinating cities in the world, one of the best cities to live in the world, and I hope that you get a chance to experience that. Anyways, best of luck to you. Best of luck to you in finding a place to live in Amsterdam. Take care.